twice a month type of ordeal. I do a whisper ramble till you fall asleep for an hour, whatever you want to title this video. <laughs> and uh, I talk about all the current events about the sporting world, whether it's big time ones like, of course, March Badness of Basketball is going on right now. The MOB just started their uh, brand new season, the baseball season, which is kind of exciting. Or maybe even some other events that we always talk about, like the NBA playoffs, the playoff picture, how that's shaking out to be, and even some very niche things like maybe some F1 racing, UFC fighting, anything else we can sort of get our little hands on, we can talk about, so it is really exciting. So make sure, of course, you like, 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 like the video before you sit back and relax or fall asleep, play some video games, study, whatever you're doing, you listen to these whisper rambles. Um, make sure you like the video before you get into that. And make sure to comment down below any current events that you would like to talk about, any sports, anything you'd specifically like to know about in the next upcoming video, or just let me know about your own opinions and thoughts about some of the current events going on in the sporting world, and maybe you'll be popping up on our next video. I'll, I'll always have to include the community in my videos, which is kind of cool. Speaking of that, that report, again, we get started. We have an hour, so we have plenty of time. On my community uh, page right now, if you go on my channel, on my community page right now, you should see a community post being on there talking about an upcoming video where you can be a part of it. I'm going to be doing a very quick kind of ASMR video on your favorite trigger words. So if you are a person who likes to watch ASMR videos, let me know in that little, I guess, community post. Let me know your favorite ASMR trigger words like uh, toasted coconut, maybe your name, maybe a specific random thing I've heard about, maybe a sentence, a tongue twister. Let me know in that uh, community post and you will be featured on an upcoming ASMR video. All right, that being said, let's get into it. So I think the first thing we're going to be getting into tonight is March Madness. That is is what I think currently is the most exciting thing going on in the sporting sporting world. Maybe you think it's other things, but March Madness is pretty important to me. And this is we, we, we do talk a lot of basketball on this channel, that is for sure, for sure. We are not going to be talking about my bracket, though, which definitely did not turn out to be pretty well. I did not guesstimate, guesstimate, guesstimate all that well when it came to creating my bracket or even my second chance of bracket. Um, looks pretty bad. I made three second chance brackets. One of them I, you guys saw, not very good. I made another one that's kind of mid, and then I have another one that's actually doing pretty well. Why well, I did pick some of the upsets that we're going to be talking about that we saw yesterday how you guys are watching this video, and then today how you guys are watching this video. If you're watching this live, there are a couple of big time games going on right now also. So we're going to go to... Um, March 29th, March 29th, there were the uh, Sweet 16, Sweet 16 games going down to the Elite Eight. Some pretty interesting matchups going on there. We had games like Creighton versus Tennessee, Duke versus Houston, Gonzaga versus Purdue, NC State versus Marquette. And even then, Thursday, the day before that, uh, um, we had Illinois against Iowa State, Alabama versus UNC. Uh, San Diego State against Connecticut and Clemson versus Arizona. Boy, oh boy, were there some interesting games going on here with the Sweet 16. Going on to the first game that I think went on, which was Illinois versus Iowa State. Illinois comes up with the ups at the number three, takes down the number two. Nothing too crazy there. A three beating a two is not nothing too wild. But Iowa State being known as being a pretty superior team after them um, battling it out with Houston, taking out some of the big time um, college teams that were in the regular season, just couldn't get it done against Illinois, which I, I didn't predict. I didn't predict that in all my brackets. I had Illinois beating Iowa State. I just had a good gut feeling, and a lot of other big time analysts people were calling it as well. So I kind of just followed their lead, and also just my own basketball knowledge. I guess that 72-69, very close game. We had Alabama and UNC, where Alabama, the number four, takes down the first number one seeded team in UNC, 89 to 70, sorry, 89 to 87. That was also a very good game. Now, I couldn't watch it because I was actually doing a live stream that day, which, I guess if you don't know, every Monday, 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 I'm doing ASMR live streams, but recently I've been doing ASMR live streams every single Thursday, so... I'll be doing uh, live streams Mondays and Thursdays.
space and it's been so much fun i love seeing like a different crowd a different, a different vibe it's, it's like a different feel it's like a different live stream entirely on thursdays and we have a lot of fun in there um last thursday i had a bunch of bean boozled jelly beans for you for those people and they really enjoyed it so uh, if you want to stop by monday i do live streams and thursdays now also doing live streams anyways i was live streaming during this game so i couldn't watch it but a lot of people were giving me up-to-date stuff on it and it looked like a really good game holy cow we had san diego state taking on connecticut where another number one seed does not does not go down we had connecticut beating san diego state which i think this was last year's ncaa march madness tournaments championship game which is pretty wild um i'm only saying it's wild because connecticut beat san diego state 82 to 52 a 30 point blowout like connecticut man like i man i don't want to jinx them but i'm going to say it anyways this is like one of the most dominant college basketball teams we've seen in quite some time like they look that good like they are i think they are that good i think they could be like one of the best that we've seen in a, in a recent history then we had clemson taking on arizona you guys know arizona is my favorite college basketball team and clemson does end up taking down arizona this was a little bit of a bracket buster i thought arizona was going to really go all in to try to get to the final four at least because the final four and i think even the championship game is in arizona I mean, these games were even in Southern California, and they still ended up losing. Such a bad shooting performance. That's what lost them the game. Um, if you want to know the stats to this game, Arizona shot 37% from the field, 18% from the three-point line, 68% from the free throw line. Everything, everything, even the free throws, were below average. Everything else was vastly below average. They beat them on the turnover battle. They beat them on the, the, the rebounds. They beat them on blocks. They beat them on steals. They even had less fouls than Clemson. They couldn't just get the ball in the hoop. And that's how you win a game of basketball. And they just couldn't do it. So it is a bad shooting night in, ending up costing them. So Clemson moves on. We'll go into the matchups after we talk about the next um, day, which are still in the Sweet 16, by the way. We had... Um, Gonzaga taking on Purdue, where Gonzaga, well, Purdue, sorry, Purdue ends up taking the dub, the dub, the dub, the dub there, 80 to uh, 68. Gonzaga actually pretty good at the first half, with it only being a four-point game, 40 to 36, still going to Purdue. And then Purdue just kind of wide-opened them and ended the game pretty fastly. Um, nothing too crazy there with Gonzaga, this isn't like a, a Gonzaga team. Then we had Creighton taking on Tennessee, which is actually also a very fun game. I had Creighton um, winning this game in one of my brackets. Uh, a couple of my other brackets, I had Tennessee winning, and Tennessee ended up did did win, uh, 82 to 75. A very close game, but uh, after a while, Creighton just could not battle back from the deficit that they built themselves in, and Tennessee ended up taking the dub there with uh, Dalton Connect having a good game, scoring 24 points, 6 rebounds, 5 assists. Um, I did say the key to this game was to stop Dalton Connect, and they couldn't. Dalton Connect had a typical good scoring game, because I think he probably is, in my opinion, the best scorer left in March Madness tournament, so they just looked really good. They shot 46% from 3, 42% from the, uh, the field goal, from the field. I don't know why I said the field goal, the field. Um, had only four turnovers the entire game, won the rebounding battle, more blocks, more steals. They just had a really good all-around game, so, um, in my opinion, then moving on, they, they, they are going to be a tough team to beat as well. I think as a two-seed, they are a pretty strong two-seed. And then we have the upsets. Houston, the other number one-seeded team, goes down to number four, Duke. Hated team in college basketball winning this game 54 to 51 yes a game that barely went over 100 points combined good thing i didn't watch this game because it seems like kind of a sleeper of a game and not very a lot going on but 54 to 51 duke beats uh houston kind of wild kyle filipowski was the highest scorer 
score in this game, I think, um, with 16 points. Nothing too crazy there. I guess it's just like a very good defensive battle. Um, both of them shooting a 41% from the field. Duke shooting 35% from the three-point line. They're kind of winning this game. Houston, in this entire game, only took eight three-pointers. Eight three-pointers. What year is it? 1982. Like, come on. you got to take more threes than that. You have to just chuck them up. Three is more than two. Come on. I don't know what Houston was thinking about that game plan. Um, Duke ends up shooting six for 17 from three, so at least they're, they're putting some up, and that kind of won them the game in this very close battle. Just taking more attempts at three. I don't know why Houston didn't do that. Uh, then we had NC State taking out Marquette, which I don't know if anyone had this. Uh, maybe if you did, hey, you are a guru. You're a basketball savant. I applaud you. But we had NC State with the upset against Marquette, number 11 seed, a double-digit Cinderella team making it to the Elite Eight, taking down Marquette, which actually thought Marquette looked really good this Martin Madness tournament. But this is where um, that ended. Shooting only 33% from the field, 13% from three. They shot a four for 31 from three. They made four three-pointers on 31 attempts. I, me, myself, Jake Baller could do better than that. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe we'll find out one day. But yeah, four for 31, 61% from the free throw line. Uh, the ball was very stagnant, only making eight assists. The entire basketball game is really sad bad rebounding. Ah, just a sloppy game from Marquette that leads to a Cinderella upset and another uh, great Cinderella team in NC State. I know obviously there are a lot of teams out there you could have picked like a GCU, um, James Madison, people were picking as like an upset Cinderella team, but it goes to NC State, which is pretty cool. So that takes us to the games that are played today, which are Illinois against Connecticut, and then we have Clemson against Alabama. So, um, that's wild. If I can make a new quick bracket, I guess, uh, I will be taking Connecticut over Illinois. I think Illinois, the only way Illinois would win this game if they had, like, a crazy shooting game, which I guess is very possible. If they just, like, shot, shot the lights out of this game, maybe Illinois can pick up the upset, but if not, I'm taking Connecticut. I would have to take um, a very good outing from Illinois, and then I'm taking probably, I'm probably taking Alabama over Clemson. Beating a onesie like that is honestly very impressive. I think Alabama's going to take that roaming, rolling, consistent, um, vibrant vibe over. And uh, being a one seed and now also taking down Clemson, which Clemson didn't play that good against Arizona. Uh, Arizona kind of lost the game. I don't think Clemson won the game, if that makes any sense. Um, I definitely think Alabama definitely deserves the, the dub there, so... Picking Alabama to move on. And then very quickly, the games for tomorrow on Sunday. We have Tennessee taking on Purdue, a two versus a one. And then NC State versus Duke, which is wild. Um, the Purdue-Tennessee game is kind of a toss-up for me, to be completely honest. I really think Purdue could go down here. I really think they can, especially, again, if they don't stop Dalton Connect, they will lose this game. Dalton Connect is the X factor, and I keep saying it every time we talk about Tennessee, I say the game plan should be stopping Dalton Connect. He cannot have a 25, 24, 30 point per game, or 30 point uh, outing that night. You got you to give him a hard time, and if he doesn't, and he goes for, you know, 25 points, and the rest of the team follows suit with that, it's a tough loss. So, if they can do that, I think Purdue could win, but if Dalton Connect goes off, I think Tennessee could really win this game, but just for the sake of the video, I'll pick Purdue. I think Purdue still has a number one seed, looks very dominant. Then we have NC State against Duke, which, in my opinion, is a toss-up game. I have no idea what to expect. Um, Duke only scoring 50 points against a very good defensive use of the team is okay. But I do know NC State's also pretty good defensively as well, so this could really turn to a game where I have no idea what happens. NC State could literally make a Final Four. NC State has a great chance against Duke to make the Final Four. I think Duke is probably the weakest, maybe besides like the Clemson.
grandmas and their sisters, brothers, everyone, their dogs and cats are going to be rooting for Duke to go down here, having a Cinderella team make it all the way to the Final Four. It's, it's, it's beautiful. It's this beautiful college of basketball. But I'm really excited. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Um, yeah, and then I guess the next bracket, the next side of the bracket would be, wouldn't it be Duke versus Purdue? And then I think it would be Alabama Clemson versus the winner of Connecticut or Illinois. So it'd be Connecticut against Alabama. I'm still picking Connecticut. I think Connecticut is in the final now. I don't think, no offense, I don't think Clemson, I don't think Alabama, Illinois, I don't think any of them, I think Illinois would be the most likely team to take down Connecticut. If Connecticut gets past Illinois, they are punching their ticket into the, the end of the championship game, in my own opinion. And then on the other side of the bracket, it's definitely more interesting with Purdue, Tennessee, Duke, NC State. Um, I do think the winner of Tennessee or Purdue will make it also to the finals. So, in my opinion, I'm seeing a Connecticut versus Purdue or Connecticut versus Tennessee final game, which I think is super exciting. Obviously, everyone wants to see Connecticut versus Purdue, Klingon versus Zach Eady, the great guard matchups that we have going on there. Dalton Connect maybe showing that he is the best player in college basketball. Um, could be really fun to see as well against Connecticut, kind of giving like a big shining spotlight moment. That could be a good, good game. So I'm, I'm hoping for that. I'm hoping for one of those, th one of those two teams to be in the finale against Connecticut. If not, maybe NC State makes it all the way. We'll have to wait and see. Okay, I think very quickly we are going to talk, um, do I want to talk regular basketball or do I want to talk MLB just to kind of cleanse the palate of basketball? You know, let's just do NBA kind of quickly. I know we all like to talk basketball here, but after this, we're, we're done talking basketball for the rest of the video. Let's see. So, uh, let's see, let's do, I guess, the games for today as you guys are watching this video. Maybe I'll do the games for tomorrow also, but we all know we want to talk about the standings and the playoff picture. But very quickly, the games, if, again, if you're watching this video live, we have the Celtics taking on the Pelicans, the Grizzlies taking on the Magic, and the Bucks taking on the Hawks. Well, the Hawks have been kind of on a fiery streak, taking down back-to-back -back games of the number one team in the entire NBA. The Boston Celtics, I think one of them was a DeJounte Murray buzzer beater which is pretty dope. I love watching buzzer beaters. Um, then the Celtic Pelican game can also be very interesting, especially, again, with the Celtics kind of having a couple slow games here. I think the Pelicans can come up here with Zion being, knock on wood, um, pretty healthy this season. No Brandon Ingram, though, but Zion is definitely playing very well. Very surprised he didn't make an all-star team this year, and uh, that Pelican team is rolling into the playoffs. Then we have the Grizzlies versus the Magic, where obviously, of course, the Grizzlies are tanking, so there's the win, Orlando, take it, it's for you to have. <laughs> Anyways, let's go on to the standings here. Okay, so let's do, let's do the Western Conference first, because it's a little bit more interesting. Um, in the Western Conference, still tied, yes, this entire year, I've been doing these NBA talking videos, sports talking videos, these one hour long, until you fall asleep, whisper ramble videos. The Minnesota Timberwolves and the Oklahoma City Thunder are still tied for the number one seed in the Western Conference. It's It's been like this the entire year, and it hasn't stopped yet. It looks like it's not going to stop until the last day, which is super wild to see who's going to get that number one seed. Anyways, Timberwolves are first, according to this. Thunder are second. Denver uh, Nuggets are third. Clippers are fourth. Pelicans are fifth. Then it goes Dallas Mavericks, Kings 7th, Suns 8th, Lakers 9th, Warriors are still in that number 110 seat where they are just holding on to dear life. They are praying that the, the team right below them, the Houston Rockets at 11, start losing because they are on a 11 game winning streak. A round of applause for the Houston Rockets being a team that I think were pretty down in the dumps recently about like a month or so ago that made their way back to a potential playing spot making this season very interesting uh, then at 12 we have the Utah Jazz Grizzlies, Blazers and the San Antonio Spurs um, I actually think oh actually bes 
besides the Toronto Raptors, which we'll talk about in a little bit, who have a, lo- a losing streak of 12, the Portland Trailblazers have the second longest losing streak at nine games straight. Portland is tanking. They are praying for Vic- no, I almost said Victor Wembanyama. Sorry. They're playing for Alexander Saar. Alexander, Alexander Saar. If you don't know, look into him. He's supposed to be a pretty good prospect, but Portland desperately wants him, it looks. Okay, anything surprising going on here in the playoff runnings? Um, again, the Timberwolves and Thunder being tied for the number one seed is very funny, but at number three, the Denver Nuggets are only half a game back, so it's still a three-man race here, three-team race for that number one seed, which I think is going to come into a huge play especially if you're a fan of the Thunder or the Minnesota Timberwolves. Of course, this is more for the Thunder being a younger team. Not having to worry about not having a home court advantage is going to be so important for a very young team who have not had a playoff run. God, I can't even remember the last time the Thunder even had a playoff run, and I guess it was the Katie Russell Westbrook Thunder teams, because even the Thunder with Katie, whoops, sorry, with Russ and Paul George didn't really do much in the, in the playoffs, I don't think. Maybe they did. Anyways, this Thunder team has a lot of people talking about being a title contender, already super young in their NBA careers, and if they do not have home court advantage and they take on uh, the Denver Nuggets or the LA Clippers, that's going to be tough for them if they don't have home court advantage over those guys, so they definitely got to want the, the highest seed as possible. Same thing with uh, with the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves, but they are a little bit more veteran-led. They have Cat, Gobert, uh, Mike Conley, some good vets. I think they're a little bit more prepared for that, but the Thunder desperately, in my opinion, need that number one seed if they want this playoff hope to go in. But Denver is still very scary. Only half a game back. Um, then we have the Clippers, Pelicans, and Mavericks. You can even throw in the Kings there, maybe even the Suns in there, all kind of battling for that last home court advantage spot at number four. Um, and then five, six, seven, eight are just all one, two, three games away from each other. It's it's a very close race, and it's going to be flip-flopping a lot with the final, I would say, 10-ish games, 15 games of the NBA season. Um, I'm very excited about it. <laughs> Uh, let's see, the Dallas Mavericks right now currently are on a six-game winning streak. I know Luka Doncic is just really trying his best to get his name in that MVP race, which in my opinion, if he does get up to that four seed, y'all know I'm a big Luka Doncic fan. He's like one of my favorite players, if not even maybe my favorite player to watch in the NBA. Super fun, and I always, <laughs> every year, every year pick Luka Doncic to be my MVP. Um, it's going to happen one of these days. He's going to be a multiple-time MVP winner. It's just a matter of time of win. Maybe this year he gets a nod, but uh, he's still in the sixth spot, which is not, I don't think, high enough to really be that true MVP race. If he gets up to three, four, um, that could be pretty impressive, but I don't think he's going to catch it. Um, then down in like the lower side of the playoff runs with the Kings, Suns, Lakers, and Warriors, you can also throw in the Houston Rockets. Those Western Conference NBA playoff games are going to feed my soul. They're going to be so dope. Single game elimination. KD Suns going up against the, my, one of my favorite teams in the, uh, the the Sacramento Kings. Then, of course, you have the Lakers versus the Warriors. Maybe you have the Lakers versus the Houston Rockets with Dylan Brooks. Those are very spicy rivalries that are going to be very fun to watch as well. And what's also really funny, besides the Houston Rockets, all these teams are veteran-led teams. Maybe you can throw in the Kings out of that conversation as well, but like if you're the Thunder and the Timberwolves, kind of youngerish teams. Like having to go up against like these championship breaded teams like the Suns or the Lakers are going to be very, very interesting. I would be terrified if I'm a Thunder or Timberwolves fan knowing that your seventh, eighth seed matchup is Kevin Durant and Devin Booker. Like that is just terrifying. So don't be surprised about any upsets in this year's uh, playoffs. Going over to the Eastern, the Eastern, the Eastern Conference now. Um, still, the number one seeded team and the best team in the entire NBA still, record-wise. We have the Boston Celtics. Then 11 games. Yes, 11 games back are the Bucks. Number three are the Cavaliers. Four are the Knicks. Five, Orlando Magic. Six, Indiana Pacers. 7, the Miami Heat, 8, the 76ers, Bulls, Hawks, 11 are the Nets, 12 are the Raptors like we just talked about, 13, we have the Charlotte Hornets, uh, Washington Wizards, which are not last anymore, because the dead last team are the Detroit Pistons now. 
theorizing about these bra- uh, I said these brackets, these standings. Um, I mean, just besides the eleven game distance between the one seed and the two seed is just wild. I mean, Boston's already uh, they're going to be a sixty win team this year, which that is just so impressive. Like that is ridiculous. I, I did pick, I did say Boston was going to have the number one seed this year. I did say Boston was my favorite going into this year. I did say Boston or my pick to win the NBA championship this year before the season started. You can go all the way back and check. But even then, the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Milwaukee Bucks are battling it out for the two and the three seed with it being only, was it a game and a half, a game back? That's pretty impressive. The Cleveland Cavaliers, very sneaky MVP run there from Donovan Mitchell, who's doing a pretty good job there, which we all know is just a ticking, a ticking, a ticking, a ticking time bomb before he eventually asked for a trade. No, uh, in my opinion, I think if, if, if Cleveland loses in the first round, I think that's a very big possibility that Donovan Mitchell does ask out, does not see his full tenure there as a Cleveland Cavalier, and does ask for a trade, but I think if they make the second round, maybe even the conference finals, if you know, something crazy happens, I think he probably sticks around because that team is still super young and super talented, but maybe his his will to want to live somewhere else is just too strong. Maybe he does to go to Miami or the New York Knicks, Brooklyn Nets, I've heard as well. He just wants to go to a bigger market team, and maybe that just turns him away from just a very talented Cleveland team. Of course, they are battling for the second seed in the Eastern Conference, which is really impressive. Then we have the New York Knicks there at four, um, at a record of 44 and 29, still looking really good. I know they've been riddled with injuries, and uh, of course, like OG and Anobi. And uh, Julius Randle have been out of the lineup for a period of time. Jalen Brunson's kind of just been trying to run the show by himself. And I think he just dropped a 60-point game, which was still a loss for the New York Knicks. But, man, Jalen Brunson is looking great. Do I still think Jalen Brunson is not good enough to win an NBA championship as her best player? Yes. No offense, Jalen Brunson. I love ya. I went to a New York Knicks game live in New York, Madison Square Garden. I loved I loved seeing Jalen Brunson play live. He still is not the number one guy on a title winning team. I'll say it a thousand times. They need a true superstar. No offense. Um, uh, Orlando, the Pacers are kind of battling out their five and six, and the Miami Heat are there in seventh with... The Philadelphia 76ers are falling pretty heavily, of course, without having Joel Embiid on the team, just really relying on Tyrese Maxey to do as much as he can. He's also been someone that's been battling with injury as well, though, so that Sixer team is just... It's just dreadful. Um, it's sad that their best player, and arguably the best player in the entire NBA, you could even argue with Joel Embiid, is just an injury-prone center. It's very sad. I mean, if Joel Embiid could just stay healthy his entire career, he'd probably go down as one of the best centers in the NBA's history. Like, he'd be a multiple-time MVP. Maybe even as I've already won a championship with Philadelphia already if, if Joel Embiid could just be a healthier player. But, sadly, and for the matter of fact, that's not it. And I don't know when he's supposed to return. I think he's supposed to return sometime during the playoffs, maybe early first round. But they gotta make it there first because right now, currently, the 76ers are in the play-in. And I do think the Hawks, if Trey Young comes back fully healthy, can beat them. Maybe the Chicago Bulls. Maybe. But uh, they're definitely losing against the Heat in that Atlanta Hawk game with a, a healthy Trey Young and everyone there. If Joel Embiid isn't playing in that game, I would be terrified as a Sixer fan. So, better watch out for that. But yeah, that is... Uh, that's pretty much it, so um, let me go over to Tankathon so I can check out the NBA playoff preview. And right now, currently, if the playoffs started today, of course, again, we'd have the playing scenario of uh, the Western Conference, Phoenix versus the Kings. I'd pick the Phoenix Suns to win that game, going in as the true seven seed. We have the Lakers against the Golden State Warriors, again, if the season started or ended today. I I don't want to say why I think he's going to make it there at the end of the day, but let's just say it's the Warriors and the Lakers. Oh, man. I do think the Lakers probably win or either Golden State, but in my opinion, and this is a spicy take, as someone who does like the Lakers, I am a LeBron lover. LeBron, he's the man. Um, I do think the Kings actually make it there as the eighth seed, so I do think Suns making 
house this year, if I could call how I see it right now. So in the Western Conference, we'd have Minnesota against the Kings. I think I'd probably take Minnesota winning that one. Then when you have the Thunder against the Phoenix Suns, which I don't know who, who would win that matchup. I don't know. Um, if the Phoenix Suns are fully healthy with that big three, Yusuf Nurkic is having great games, and Grayson Allen is still being probably the best shooter, pure shooter, well, besides like Steph Curry and blah, 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 but percentage-wise being one of the best shooters in the NBA. I might pick the upset of the Phoenix Suns beating the Thunder. I really might. Again, the, the, the playoffs and the regular season are two different animals. They're two different breeds. They are two different seasons. The Phoenix Suns just have guys who are ready for it, and the Thunder are just too young and not enough experience to do it, so maybe the upset. Then you have the Clippers against the Pelicans, which might be the best ra- the first round matchup. That's going to be super competitive. I can see that going seven games, but I would give the edge to the Clippers. Then when you have Denver against Dallas, I think Denver kind of handles Dallas. I don't think Dallas has enough size to beat, you know, Jokic and, and Aaron Gordon and the passing ability that team has. I, I, I think they probably get it done in about five or, or six games, probably closer to six games. Then on the East, we would have the playing scenario of Miami versus Philly taking Miami and Chicago and Atlanta taking Atlanta if, you know, Trey Young is there. I don't know if he's out for the entire season or not. And then when it comes to, again, Philly versus Atlanta, I'm taking Atlanta. If, if Joel Embiid isn't there, I'm taking Atlanta. Uh, maybe just locking down Tyrese Maxey, trying to get others to beat them. And if Kelly Oubre or Tobias Harris have bad games, then it's a GG and then Atlanta Hawks move on as the, the next true eight seed. So we'd have Boston against Atlanta. Of course, I'm taking Boston to win, maybe in a sweep there. Maybe I'll give Atlanta one game. Then at the two spot, we'd have Milwaukee versus Miami. Oh my god, a rematch of last year where the number eight seeded Miami Heat beat down the number one seeded Milwaukee Bucks. History does not repeat itself, though. I am taking the Bucks to win against the Heat. Maybe it's six or seven games, but uh, last year, as we all know, the, the Miami Heat were they were going off of pure fire. Like, they just, they hit a spark. They played their best basketball at the right time, and they made it all the way to the NBA Finals. Do I think the Miami Heat are that good all the time? Absolutely not. Now, could Miami hit that spark again and do it again? Absolutely. But it's just more of a chance that they don't. So I'm taking Milwaukee to win against uh, against uh, the Miami Heat. We have the Knicks against Orlando. This is also is going to be a very fun matchup. I am going to take the Knicks maybe at five or six games, probably closer to six games. And then Cleveland, Indiana, where I do know Indiana does not have Ben Matherin anymore for their entire year, and I just don't think they're going to be getting enough done. And I don't, I don't think that team has enough pieces yet to the puzzle to beat a team like uh, Cleveland that has, again, like an MVP caliber player, multiple almost all-stars like Darius Garland and Jared Allen, Evan Mobley. I, I just don't think they have enough. It's like, I don't know. I think Minnesota could probably beat the Clippers. I think that would be a very good matchup against the Clippers. Um, it could be either way, though. I, I'm just spitballing. Again, I'm just spitballing. I'm not choosing or predicting. I'm just spitballing. Uh, then we have Denver against, I guess, the Phoenix Suns or even the, the, the Thunder. That's also going to be a close matchup, but I do think Denver beats either of those teams. And it's probably Denver in the Western Conference Finals against the winner of the Clippers and the Timberwolves, which then either one of those teams would be awesome. I guess if you're maybe rooting for a Denver demise, you'd probably want the Timberwolves just because they are a bigger team, probably a little bit more sound, just because, again, the uh, the Clippers are you know injury-prone and all that stuff. In the East, you would have Boston going up against New York, which I would pick Boston to win that as well. Um... If, if the New York Knicks are really hitting and OG oh, and OB has just a lockdown series against Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown, whoever they put him on, probably Jason Tatum, I would assume. I think the Knicks could take this game to seven, but the series to seven, but I still just don't think they have enough oomph on that team to, uh, to beat the Knicks. Then you would have Cleveland against Milwaukee, and that's really a toss-up. It would not surprise me if Milwaukee just implodes and Cleveland beats them out there to make it to the conference finals, but I'll just say I'm going to trust the star power here in playoffs are all about star power, making Giannis and Dame going out of the West, uh, the Eastern Conference Finals against Jason Tatum. Probably the Boston Celtics to win there, and just to, to finish this very quickly, uh, Celtics Denver, probably NBA Finals, the winner of that. I'll leave it up to your imagination, because I don't even really know. Anyways, enough NBA, enough basketball. Let's get
into some other sports like the MLB that just again recently started their season I think actually yesterday 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 the 20 come on 29th was the opening day which was pretty interesting we have the Dodgers beating out the St. Louis Cardinals uh, the Diamondbacks beat the Rockies the Padres lose to the Giants uh, the Mariners beat the Red Sox as well. Was it actually the opening day? Let me actually check. <laughs> uh, ba, ba, ba. I think it is. I think it was opening day. Maybe opening day could have been Thursday. Actually, I think it was Thursday. I think Thursday was. Because I remember during, again, quick plug during my ASMR Thursday night live stream, we talked about the opening day of the MLB. Um, let's see. The Yankees beat the Astros. The Padres beat the Giants at that time. And Dodgers still beat the St. Louis Cardinals and Shohei Otani and the Dodgers look extremely dominant with the Orioles beating my favorite MLB baseball team the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim very sad I do like the Dodgers though too which I mean the Dodgers I do like the Padres though as well so I have a, another team I do get to follow because the Angels suck but as we currently uh, I guess can see the standings that are very very early uh, the number one team right, right now are technically the Guardians, the Cleveland Guardians and the New York Yankees, both having two wins, of course, no losses, and yeah, apparently the Yankees are looking super stacked, of course, they have um, Juan Soto on that team now, obviously getting a fully healthy team is what's really important for them, if they can stay fully healthy, they can definitely take on a new team there, which is going to be really exciting, uh, but I would still pick the Dodgers, everyone always asks me, Jake, who do you have as the best team or the number one team, who do you think is going to win it all? I'm still going to pick the Dodgers. I picked the Dodgers last year. I'm picking them this year. The Dodgers are just a team. Especially now with Shohei Ohtani, just look absolutely unstoppable. They've added so many good free agents this past summer, and they just look so hard to stop. Uh, yeah, I know the Orioles are also now a decent, finally, MLB baseball team as well, which is really exciting. Um, of course, the Astros, who I think won the championship last year, was, was the Astros. <laughs> I don't even remember who won the championship last year. That's how, like, out of the baseball loop I am, you know? Uh, I love going to baseball games. I love, 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 love going to baseball games. But, man, do I know nothing uh, too much about baseball all that much. But, uh, yeah, pretty exciting. Oh, actually, the Diamondbacks and the Pirates are also 2-0, with the Dodgers being 3-1. So, Dodgers played more games, it looks like. So, maybe the Dodgers could say, just because they played more games, are the best team right now, record-wise. But, you know, we have some undefeated teams still that are pretty exciting to watch as well. But, yeah, and then we have teams like the Cardinals, who are 0-2. Um, we have the Marlins, who are 0-2. The Rockies, 0-2. Seattle Mariners, 
I guess they are my local um, baseball team that whenever I do want to go see baseball, I drive up to Seattle. It's a couple hour drive, but uh, it's the local team, I guess. But yeah, maybe I'll, I'll film a video for you guys, even though I filmed a, I filmed a lot of um, ASMR in the public at a baseball game videos. I filmed a handful of them already there at, uh, is it T-Mobile Park? Is that their park, their stadium, T-Mobile Park, I think. I've already done a lot of them there anyways, but, yeah, uh, anyways, anything else we can really talk about? Um, maybe we could talk some soccer, maybe. I mean, I could talk about the, the women's college basketball. I'll do it at the end of this video. I don't want to talk too much basketball in section in succession um, with soccer, football, the Champions League. I guess we can first talk about which there's not really much to talk about the Champions League um, with the Champions League right now. Um, no games really. Uh, I th even the last time we did uh, an ASMR all about sports whisper ramble one hour long video, whatever you want to call these. Um, the last time we talked about that, there still have been no games since then. The last games that have been going on were uh, March 13th, which is wild. I think we already talked about them. Atletico Madrid taking on Inter uh, Milan. Uh, Dortmund taking on PSV. Uh, Barcelona against Napoli. We kind of, I think, already talked about those the last time we did one of these. Uh, the next games are still April 9th and April 10th. We have Arsenal taking on Bayern Munich. And then Real Madrid taking on Man City, which I'm super excited about for sure, for sure. Uh, then we have the quarterfinal leg two days, which are April 16th. Uh, Dortmund taking on Atletico Madrid again. Arsenal, uh, sorry, Arsenal, Arsenal against Bayern Munich. Man City against uh, Real Madrid also. Then finally we have the semifinal legs, April 30th. Then the finale, the final game, the Champions League Championship is June 1st, so we still have a handful of time till we get there, so many more, many more games of, of football to be had, or many more matches to be had, but taking a look at the Premier League for the games that we have going on, Premier League, which is still a, the, the only really league I to really look into all that much, um, we have, I've had a handful of games, yeah, today, Saturday, as you guys are watching this video live, um, any good ones? Newcastle versus West Ham was a pretty fun game. It looks like uh, going four to three, which is pretty cool. Um, some other games that are just currently going on right now. And then tomorrow on Sunday, we do have a big time matchup, which I pinky promise. I was a pinky promise like this. I pinky promise that I will watch at least some of the Man City versus Arsenal game on Sunday. That is going to be uh, Sunday, March. 31st, which is also pretty exciting. Um, happy Easter to all those people who celebrate Easter. Um, Man City versus Arsenal. Now, if you're wondering why Jake is at a big time match, well, if you like, actually look at the Premier League standings at the table. Arsenal in first place of the Premier League with 20 wins, 4 draws, 4 losses, with um, 64 points. Man City in third place, 19 wins, 6 draws, 3 losses, 4, 63 points. It, the, the, the table for number one is very close. Um, Arsenal, Liverpool is in second. They also play tomorrow. They're probably going to win. It's not against anyone crazy. But Man City and Arsenal game is going to be very impressive. I'm definitely going to be there to watch at least some parts of it. I, I will still say I do think that Man City is the bet the best team. I think they are going to win in the Champions League, in my own opinion. I do think they just have it all. They have star power. They have um, depth. They have the capability. They won it last year, and I'll just pick them again, doing it again. So I do really, really hope that it's a better... Well, I mean, the finale game was okay. I just hope it's against a better opponent. No, against... Nothing against Inter Milan. Inter, Inter, Inter Milan. But I do think there could be um, a more favorable matchup for the Champions League. Maybe you could throw in Bayern Munich in there. I think that'd be a very fun game. Of course, like PSG would be cool. Um, Arsenal, I guess, could also make it there. I think that could be a finale matchup, potentially, at least somewhere close to the end. Um, that'd be very that'd be very sick, but I do see Man City at least making the finale game and just seeing what happens with the, that sort of matchup. But yeah, it's all really happening in the Premier 
Premier League. Um, we have uh, Aston Villa there in fourth place. The Tottenham Hotspurs there in fifth. Man United sixth. Um, Newcastle tenth. Chelsea eleventh. Crystal Palace fourteenth. And still the very dead last teams that I think have been the same dead last teams for the past handful of weeks now that can every time we do one of these, it's the same teams, but still kind of the same teams. And then uh, we already talked about the Champions League. You don't really need to take a look at the Champions League standings anymore, like the tables and groups and stuff. It's just come back down to the, the games, like the single games that are going on right now, which aren't happening for a while, obviously. So... Yeah, that's basically it for those two. Um, I guess, yeah, like I said, we can talk maybe very quickly about uh, the Women's March Madness Tournament, which I have been taking kind of a look into. Again, when it comes to women's college basketball, um, like South Carolina is just such a dominant team. I still think they're going to win it all, and they are just been so dominant for so long. They're kind of just always in that mix. It kind of reminds me of when UConn was just dominating women's college basketball for... God, I feel like I feel like at like a decade, Connecticut was just dominating women's college basketball. I feel like South Carolina is still on that level, and I do feel like they're still going to win it all, in my opinion. Uh, currently today, as you guys are watching this video, um, there are, it looks like, a handful of games going on. I don't know what games are currently, like, March Madness and what games aren't March Madness, but... There's Iowa taking on Colorado, the one seed against the five seed. Uh, of course, Iowa has Caitlin Clark, who is just amazing. She's just super fun to watch. Kind of like the uh, the Steph Curry of the, the women's basketball generation. And she's probably going to help um, contribute to a lot of, hopefully, other really good basketball players around the world. Uh, then we have LSU taking on UCLA, the three against the two. We have number five, Baylor, going on against USC. And Connecticut, three, taking on Duke, which Duke's women's basketball team I've never really heard about being any good ever. And of course, Duke, the men's team, like a blue blood school. I don't know if it's the same thing for the women's uh, side of that, but pretty exciting. And then tomorrow, on Sunday, we have Oregon State taking on South Carolina. Again, South Carolina is just pretty amazing. They are a 14 and a half point over. Wow, they are looking very good in this game also. And you have Texas against North Carolina State, which looks like, I guess, according to the betting odds, looks like a very close matchup. So that'll also be very fun to see um, as well. Anything else we can get into? Anything else? Um, I know people have been wanting me to, of course, get more into Formula One. Formula One, which the next Formula One race that's supposed to be going on is the Japan, 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 Japan Grand Prix, which is pretty sick. Japanese Grand Prix 2024, um, I guess, racist, I don't know what FP3 is, FP3, is that like free practice, or something like that, I'm not entirely sure, uh, then the qualifying race is actually April 5th on Friday, the qualifying races, which is pretty cool, and then you have the actual Grand Prix, the actual race race on Saturday, April 6th, which is really cool. Taking a look at the standing for the F1 races right now. We still have Verstappen, Max Verstappen, Max Verstappen there in first place. Absolutely. Oh, sounds like there's a race going on outside the apartment. Uh, still in first place with 575 points. Absolutely insane. Uh, then you have Sergio Perez in second. Then we have Lewis Hamilton, who's probably the most famous, most popular F1 driver out there in third. Wow. Uh, if you want to know, like, the teams, uh, if you don't know with F1 racing, of course, the standings for the single um, racers are very important. But what really comes down to are the teams, the teams that race with each other. And Red Bull right now has 860 points with a second place Mercedes with 409, uh, less than half of the current, current, current first place, current first place, which is pretty wild, I'd have to say. Not gonna lie. Then you have Ferrari third and McLaren fourth and Aston Martin fifth, with the last place being um Haas F1 team. And Alfa Romeo is also ninth, looking really bad as well. Alfa Romeo. That's a car brand, isn't it? I'm assuming, obviously. Never heard of them before. But uh yeah, 
us if like my dad or like my mom when we were all used to go together would like go out by themselves we would hang out with him and we would have nascar on and it was pretty boring but eh, it's a little bit more exciting now especially like the last like 10 20 laps Ooh, that's very spicy very spicy very spicy um any golfing going on is that like a thing <laughs> some golf um see that's like going on that's crazy i don't know if any like tours are going on well the masters actually start april 9th through the 15th the masters in augusta pretty popular there in georgia the masters start april 9th i'm sorry april 11th through the 15th it's gonna be the masters which is obviously the uh the super bowl of golf um i could not even tell you who i think is the best or who is the best golfer out there i i legitimately have zero ideas um you can take a look at the standings but nothing really pops up when you take a look at the standings let me know down in the comments if you're a big golfing fan who's like the best golfer the best golfers let me know down in the comments i'd love to catch up on that and is there anything else we can really talk about? Nothing really going on in the NFL because, again, free agency just finished up. Um, but I am really excited to uh, talk about more NFL stuff when that kind of comes back around. I know you guys really like the football talk. You missed the football talk. And I actually had a lot of fun watching the NFL this year. I think this year was maybe my most covered I've done of the NFL. And uh, it was a really good season, really fun. And this next season with a lot of really good players and signing is going to different teams. Some of the big top guys are still the big top guys. I think this is going to be a very competitive year as well, so I am super excited about that. But we can finish up this video talking about the NHL, which I know for some people might be kind of sleeper, kind of sleeper, kind of sleeper, but very quickly. Um, take a look at the standings of the NHL. Uh, we have on the Eastern Conference the New York Rangers actually as the number one team in the Eastern Conference. The Rangers having a record of 49, 20, and 4 with 102 points. That's pretty wild. Shout out to the Rangers. Maybe I should have went to a Rangers game when I went to New York instead of a Knicks game. No, I don't know. Uh, then you have the Hurricanes. Who I actually have no idea where the Hurricanes are from. It's not Tampa Bay. I actually have no idea. I couldn't guess. Uh, yeah, the Bruins, the Panthers, the Maple Leafs, and the Lion, the Lightning, Flyers, and the Capitals. They are in eighth. Uh, the bottom team are still the Blue Jackets. I think they've been the bottom every single time we've done one of these videos. And then for the Western Conference, you have the Dallas Stars in first place with a record of 46, 19, and 9. Um, pretty impressive with a uh, points of 101. Then you have the Canucks, the Avalanche, the Jets, the Oilers, the Predators, Two of my favorite teams, the Golden Knights and the Kings there, which um, the Golden Knights won the NHL Stanley Cup last year, I think. If I can remember, I think they did. And the Kings are, are down there as well, which are, are, not looking, are not looking very good. And then the last place team are the San Jose Sarks with a record of 16 wins, 48 losses. Yikes, they are the losingest losers of the NHL, so... That's pretty rough. Was there anything else we wanted to talk about? I don't know if anything UFC or fighting or related is going on besides like Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson, which I don't even know how I feel about that, to be completely honest. Apparently there's like rules that were established between Jake Paul and Mike Tyson. Like, like it, it, there's no decision that's going to happen. Like, the, like, it has to be a knockout or a knockdown to be able to win the fight. Um, apparently there's gonna be like 16 ounce gloves, a bunch of other random stuff going on in this fight, like a lot of random rules. I don't even think this is gonna be like a legit professional fight, like it's, it sounds more of like an exhibition type of ordeal, it's not like a true fight, which is really weird. But I know everyone's gonna wanna watch it, I'm gonna wanna watch it, I think it's gonna be really exciting. So I'm kinda happy about that, um, I do still think Jake Paul's gonna win just because uh, it's a man who's in his 20s going up against a man who is, like, 60-something, I think, maybe late 50s on the good end. I think he's probably in his 60s by now, Mike Tyson. He looks good when hitting bats, but you can make anyone look good hitting bats. If I started boxing tomorrow, I could make a collage video of me looking like a, an absolute champ hitting the pads. But I know when he gets, it, gets in there, it's going to be really surprising. But I hope it's not rigged. I hope it's an actual fight. But when it comes to boxing, 
boxing, who knows, when it comes to Jake Paul fights, who knows, but uh, that should be interesting, and then I know UFC 300 is supposed to start, I think sometime relatively soon as well, so whenever that does get a little bit closer, I'll talk about it, whenever the, NH uh, the NFL draft gets closer, I'll talk about that as well, I'm super sorry about the cars outside, there's a race going on outside it sounds like, but, alright guys, I think that's going to be it for me, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh. Yikes, wow, thank you so much for watching tonight's video. Sorry, it's getting kind of loud. It's a good time to end the video. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, make sure again you, of course, like, 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 like the video. Like the video. If you do like the video, it really helped me out a lot. It really helps out this video a lot. Again, it is a one hour long video, so it's a one hour long, you know. I mean, I wish it was only one hour long of editing, but it's more than an hour long of editing. It's a lot of editing, a lot of rendering. So just to show some support uh, for this very long video, make sure, of course, you do like the video. You know, subscribe to the channel. Um, comment down below any more sort of uh, sports-related topics you want to talk about in the next video. Any sports, any upcoming events that are going on, anything of that sort of manner. Maybe answering some questions that I have. Maybe going in a little bit more into detail about things. I'd love to know about that as well. Let it be known down in the comments or even just say hi. I'll say hi back. I love ya, love ya, love ya, love ya, love ya, love ya, and I'll see you again in another video very, 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 very soon. Alright guys, bye, 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 b